Costello program, brought to you by Camels, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camels stay fresh because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes, Cliff Nazaro, tonight's special guest, Arthur Treacher, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. <laughs> Costello, what are you doing in the bathtub? Ah, what do you think I'm doing? I'm taking a bath. What are you doing with your underwear on? The water's cold. Oh, <laughs> Will you get out of that tub and put your bathrobe on? I've got the bathrobe on now. You're wearing your bathrobe in the tub? Sure, I don't want to get my shoe wet. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. What are you doing in the bathtub on Thursday night? Hey, but I forgot to tell you, but Lynn Barrett, a beautiful movie star, is coming here for dinner, and I'm going to have a big swanky party. Oh, are you expecting people? Certainly I'm expecting people. What do you think I'm going to do? Have a flock of cows? Not flock. Herd. Herd what? Herd of cows. Of course I heard of cows. I know, dummy. I mean a cow herd. Well, I can't have a cow herd. I just say nothing to be ashamed of. All right, all right. Let's say no more about cows, please. I'm not in the mood. What mood? A cow mood. Who cares if a cow moves? Maybe you watch its little kittens. All right, look, look, forget about the cows. You don't know anything about cows in the first place. Who don't? Wait a minute, do you know what a cow gives? No. A cow gives milk. No, she don't. You've got to take it away from her. I, all right, we have to That's the first thing you've said right. You take the milk from the cow's udder. I beg your pardon? The cow's udder. <laughs> the cow's udder what? Costello, you take the milk from under the cow. You mean the crankcase. Oh. So... That's, the, that, that's the thing that's fastened to the cow's skin. No, 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 not skin. Hide. Why should I hide? I didn't do nothing. No, 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 no. Hide on the cow. How am I going to hide on a cow? Listen, a cow on listen, top of listen, a cow. Just a minute, listen please. Me. Listen to me. Hide, hide. A cow's outside. Bring her in. Let her listen to the program. Oh, what's that? Wait a minute. Quiet. Here comes Ken and Mrs. Nye. Oh, hello, Miss Rabbit. And you too, Costello. Are you surprised to see me? No, ma'am. I was expecting a cow. <laughs> what? I, don't, I mean, another kind of a cow. What? Another kind of a cow. Oh, Costello, I'm not a cow. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Whoa! <laughs> Will you stop that, Costello? That's no way to insult Mrs. Nile. You know a better way? <laughs> now, just a second, Costello. I'm getting red in the face. Where are you getting the blood? <laughs> Are you calling my Kenneth anemic? Why, just look how trim he is in that blue suit. Why, he looks like Gainsborough's blue boy. He looks more like Ginsburg's bellboy. Oh, a pretty shade of blue, ain't it? You're a fine one to talk, fat so. Me fat? I just dropped 20 pounds. You didn't drop it far enough. Oh, now, let's stop fighting, please. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Niles, Costello invited Lynn Barry to the house, and he needs some help with dinner. Oh, well, I might be able to help. I've been cooking for 12 years. You, you ought to be well done by now. No, 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 no. Put that kisser on that Quiet. kid. You see, you see, Mrs. Niles, what Costello really needs is a butler. Do you know where we can get one from? Well, uh, my uncle runs an employment agency. Well, that's fine. Here's the address. Just go over there and ask for my uncle. Oh, that's very nice, Mrs. Niles. What's his name? You go. Ask for him. Yes, ma'am. I go, but who do I ask for? She told you, you go. I know I go, but I gotta ask for somebody. Well, I told you to see my uncle. Uncle what? You go. Now, don't say that again. Don't tell me I go. Stop saying I go when Mrs. Niles says you go. All right. You go, and I won't have to go. Costello, you don't understand. My uncle's first name is Hugo. Oh, why didn't you say that in the first place? What's his last name? Guess it. Why should I? What? Why should you what? Guess his name. She didn't tell you to guess his name. Mrs. Niles, didn't you tell me his name was Hugo? Yes. What's his last name? I said guess it. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> Is it Murphy? No. Is it Jones or Smith? No, no, Costello. Guess it. Costello, I told you for the last time. You go guess it. And you go you guess go it. You go jump in the lake. <laughs> no. Close and all. I'll do nothing of the kind. Come, Kenneth. Well, Costello, they're mad again. <laughs> Now you've burned your bridges behind you. That's okay. I won't show it my coat on. Oh, come on, nonsense. <laughs> you've got to have a butler for the party. Now, uh, here's Mrs. Niles' uncle's card. Uh, call him up. Boy, this sure is for a, a funny phone number. Hey, what does it say? Established, 1903. <laughs> that isn't a phone number. It's right here on the card. Oh, nothing of the kind. That's the year he started the employment agency. 
He founded it in 1903. Oh, he founded it the business? Who lost it? Nobody lost it. But how could he found it if, if he didn't lost it it? Costello, I said he founded it. Can I help it if you don't speak good English? Yeah, Costello, please, you should be ashamed of yourself. Mr. and Mrs. Niles were kind enough to tell you where you could hire a butler. I was uh, kind enough to explain how to contact the man, but did you appreciate it? No. All you do is stand there and give me silly answers. Oh, I'm a very boy! And you, you certainly are. Don't tell my scout master on me. Well, I, I should. Oh, if you do, he'll take away my scout pins. Gee, Abbott, anything but that. I have one pin for courtesy. I got one pin for bravery and one for safety. Wait a minute. I can see the pin for courtesy and the pin for bravery. Where's the pin for safety? It's holding my pants up. Oh! <laughs> High over an island marked for invasion flies a lightning fighter plane with cameras in its nose instead of cannon and machine guns. Its only protection, the skill of its pilot. They've got what it takes, those unarmed reconnaissance pilots, and so has their cigarette, camels, first with men in all the services according to actual sales records. To our island bases go camel cigarettes by the ton, and we know they'll be fresh, cool-smoking, and slow-burning because camels are packed to go around the world. More camel cigarettes overseas may mean less in your store. But remember, when you get camels, you always get more flavor. The result of expert blending of costlier tobaccos. Camel's tobacco standard is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. C-A-M-P-L. That's camel cigarettes. They stay fresh because they're packed to go around the world. and his orchestra play a Cole Porter favorite, I get a kick out of you. Come on, Costello. Uh-huh. The Hugo Gasset Employment Agency is right down this hall. Now, let me handle this, and I'll get you a butler. Now, look at it. I'm just expecting Lynn Barry. Why do I need a butler? <laughs> but a butler in your house will make you more stable. Stable? Certainly. Just picture a butler in his livery. What I got, a house or a livery stable? Did I? You don't understand. He'll make you distinctive. He'll give your house a certain air. What am I hiring, a butler or a scum? Oh, come on. Shut up. Now, come on in the employment agency, and let me do the talking, please. Maid. My maid quit today after 15 years. I've lost my maid. I've lost my maid. Hey, mister, mister, why did your maid leave? She caught me kissing my wife. 
Costello, love, please. Never mind him. Let's talk to the clerk at the desk. How do you do, gentlemen? What can I do for you? Well, I'd like to hire a butler. You'd like to hire a butler? <laughs> oh, you mad, impetuous boy! <laughs> All right, brother, don't knock yourself out. I just want to hire a butler. You just want to hire a a butler. (laughs) What am I laughing at? (laughs) Oh, you fool. Why don't you ask me for a date with my wife? Okay, but one thing at a time. (laughs) Now, I'll have to ask you a few questions for my file. First of all, do you work in a defense plan? No, I don't. Then how can you afford a butler? (laughs) Do you own any steel mills? No. Polo ponies? No. Steamship companies? No. I'm in a rut, ain't I? (laughs) Now listen, Clark, we're in a great hurry. Haven't you got a butler we can hire? Well, there is one, Judson. But right now, he's over there. Mr. Morgan built the millionaire is talking to him. Now listen, Judson. I'll give you five nights a week off and a thousand dollars a week. All right, make it seven nights a week off. I'll give you my car. I'll do your laundry. All right, you're hired. Now please stop twisting my arm! <laughs> Nobody's looking. Lucky fellow, he's got a butler just by a twist of a wrist. Uh, look, Clark, this isn't helping us. We've got to have a butler. Lynn Barry, the movie star, is coming to dinner tonight. Lynn Barry coming to dinner? Oh, so you'll be putting on the dog. No, we're having roast beef. <laughs> what kind of talk is that? Come with me and see our manager, Mr. Nazaro. Uh, right this way. Mr. Nazaro? Yes? This is Mr. Abbott Mr. Costello. Costello would like to hire a butler. You want to hire a butler? Good heavens, man. Don't you realize that butlers can't arrest a salary to meet and he can't reach a self remark to bring a self remark to work a surveillance me? It isn't that I want a basis, say, for the boss's salary could pay this horse for the bailiff's salary. And maybe he'll be reclassified. <laughs> you don't understand. Look, Brown, didn't you tell Mr. Costello that the castle raises for the mice of bites hasn't got any forks? And didn't you tell him that the reach of salary pays to be the horse of survivor, man? Didn't you tell him that? Yes, I did. You didn't say that, brother. <laughs> now, don't interrupt the man. That's right. I'm trying to show you that that's the world of praise to me. Now, not that the cast read. Or ain't fall in the of a You get the picture I'm painting? Yeah, but you smeared it up in the middle. <laughs> Costello, he's trying to tell you that today most people are doing their own work. Even Cary Grant washes at his house. Yes, Costello, do you wash? Certainly I wash. What do you think I am, a slob? No, no, all the picture stars are washing. I passed Van Sheridan's house yesterday, and I saw her washing her shoulder veins, her rasa soap, and filled a few of And even a little Jim Dibbert, the soap, I covered her shoulder Don't you wash your twang and fill pulled in Jim I do, but the buttons break off. Never mind your buttons. Never mind my buttons. What do you want me to do, be a pinup boy? Mr. Costello, let me ask you a question. A question. When you had your last butler, did you pay him Baba did it? No, I only paid him Baba did. <laughs> Why didn't you pay him Baba did it? Because she didn't did it. <laughs> Look, Costello, now let's not get nasty. I'm trying to tell you there's a shortage of men. Butlers today aren't just a cat for force with a celery to the graves. Why, even my butler cast of horse to trade. I tried, I said to governors. Did you ever sell with horse of eight? Bring my condren, bring my satellite, bring my corset. And he bought it with a mailer face. You see what I mean? Frankly, I'm a little confused. <laughs> Why don't you pay attention to the man there? That's what's confusing me! <laughs> well, I could put it another way. You could? But would you? <laughs> now, just a minute. You can't come in here and tell me how to cater horse his salary bail box. Or even horse a when you know that I'm the only one in France to say that, what do you think I am, a castron? <laughs> it's men like you that catch the boss of South will have everybody cross with him in a salary base. And they're the hidden ginger did it, did it, so I'll go Fuddle Duddle! Fuddle Duddle? That doesn't make sense. That don't make sense! Of course it does. It certainly does not. Of all the ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life, it's Fuddle Duddle. All right, brother. What would you have said? I have said, the St. E. Foskett did the keller made a moment. <laughs> That's the word I've been trying to think of. Get out of here. Connie Haynes brings a new 
Rhythmic Hit, if that's the way you want it made. If that's the way you want it, baby, baby, that's the way it will be. I'll wait for you forever, baby. I'll wait because I'm sure that you're waiting for me. The day will come I don't need, maybe, when you'll be mine but definitely. If that's the way you want it, baby, baby, that's the way you will be. Time's a-wasting, wish that we could hasten to the man with the collar turned around. I'd like to do it right away, but you'd rather wait. So I say, if that's the way you want it, baby, baby, that's the way you will be. I'll wait for you forever, baby. I'll wait because I'm sure that you're waiting for me. The day will come, I don't need maybe when you'll be mine. But definitely, if that's the way you want it, baby, baby, I'll be waiting, sitting here waiting, baby, that's the way it will be. Try a camel cigarette, says the fellow on the radio, and you say, I have. You liked it, didn't you? And yet, maybe you're not a steady camel smoker. You see, one or two camel cigarettes aren't enough to appreciate what more flavor really means. Camels do have more flavor. Ask anyone. It's the result of our expert way of blending costlier tobaccos. This extra flavor is what helps camel cigarettes hold up, keep from going flat no matter how many you smoke. Give your second pack of camels a thorough checkup in your T-zone. That's taste and throat. Your proving ground for flavor. Yes, and for camel cigarettes, smooth, extra mildness, too. And remember, camels stay fresh, cool smoking and slow burning, because they're packed to go around the world. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels, they're first in the service. They've got what it takes. Well, Costello, come here. What are you going to do? Here it is, the night of your big party for Lynn Barry. And you haven't got a butler. Yes, but we did get a cook. Yeah, no, I'll but... call up the kitchen and tell her what to do. Now be careful what you say now. Hello, kitchen. This is Mr. Costello. I want to talk to my cook, Mrs. Blank. What? She did? At 4 o'clock in the morning? Wow! How much did it weigh? Nine pounds? At her age, too. How do you like that, Abbott? Mrs. Blank got up at 4 o'clock this morning and ate a nine-pound turkey. No. I never heard of such stuff. Betty Costello, that must be Lynn Barry. Lynn Barry? Don't get excited now. Take it easy. I like her because she's a big girl. Barry. All right, now, don't get excited. Boy, boy, at last. I'll go to the door. Fifty pounds of ice for Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith lives next door. Hey, do you mind if I leave it here at her husband's home? I guess her husband don't like ice. I, oh, look. Oh, that was a pipperoo. Well, Costello, you'd better forget about Lynn Barry. I, I don't think she's coming. Oh, no? I'll bet that's her now. Well, fair enough, us for me. Hello, Lynn. Oh, Lynn, my darling. My precious one. My loved one. My own little snooky. I love you. Boy, oh, boy, have I got the wrong number. <laughs> I can't stand this waiting. I'm losing my mind. Oh, behave yourself. You're not losing your mind any more than I am. That's close enough. Uh, yeah. Abbott, this must be Lynn Barry. I'll answer it. Darling, come into my arms. I say, aren't you a bit high strung, old boy? <laughs> Costello, look who it is. It's Arthur Treacher. Uh, 
Uh, Mr. Treacher. Now, uh, that's my line. Uh, please. Uh, uh, please. I just want to find out his professional business. That's right. How do you do, Mr. Treacher? Find out if he is a lifesaver. You know what I mean. No, no, no. Thank you. How do you do, Mr. Treacher? I'm Bud Abbott, and this, uh, this is Lou Costello. I'm glad you told me. I thought it was cabbage cooking. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Treacher. The only reason I don't poke you in the nose is because I'm bigger than you. It so happens that I'm bigger than you. That's a better reason. No. <laughs> Look, Mr. Treacher, don't mind Costello. He was expecting uh, Lynn Barry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's down in the dumps. Yes, that's where she told me I'd find him. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Treacher. Mr. Treacher to you, punk. Mr. Punk, to you, Treacher. Now stop that, Costello. I want to know what he's doing here. What are you doing here, Shorty? All your information, you poisonous person. I am Miss Barry's butler. Before she sets one dainty foot in this hovel, I wish to inspect the premises, the service, and the food here. Here? <laughs> yes, here. Oh, dear. Uh, Costello. Oh, you let go. Now, listen, Costello. Up up! Now, Costello, that isn't a bit nice coming. What can it talk? Please. 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 Costello. There's a reason. Yes, yeah, sit down, you. Yep. No, 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 no. Here, here. Don't talk like that. Over here. Yes. Lou, don't you understand? Over there. Well, don't you understand, Lou? Somebody better talk besides me. Now, wait a minute. Come here, Lou. Don't you understand? He's English. He's, uh, he's English? Yeah. If he was any more English, he couldn't talk at all. Well, over here. here. Look, look here. Look here, Treacher. Who are you to come in here and question Costello's official standing? After all, I sprang from nobility. And you didn't spring far enough. Ah, no, 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 no. No, no you no. didn't spring no, no, far no. enough. I'll have you know that my family is very prominent, socially. My father has a country seat in Wembley and a city seat in Devonshire. Your father has two seats? Yes. Does Ripley know about it? Uh. Costello, be careful how you talk Abbott, to me. don't you start talking right. like that, Now, buddy. wait a minute, please. Make it more pronounced, Mr. Right. Costello. All right, all right, Costello. That's better. Be careful how you talk to Mr. Treacher. He's a polished gentleman. He sounds like he's shellac. <laughs> you don't understand. Now, look here. I'm from Eaton. You're from hunger. You're impossible. <laughs> You're absolutely impossible. Hey, you're nuts. I am. Over here. No, 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 no. <laughs> Mr. S- Mr. Treacher's an educated man. He's a linguist. Yes. You I... told me he was English before. Yes. A linguist. Linguist. What's the difference between linguist and English? Never mind. Wait a minute. I can't say out. either word yes, anyway. Man. Will you? Uh, yes, you. perhaps I can make you understand it. French. Parlez-vous français? Oui, oui. Bien. <laughs> Vous avez étudié dans un pension? Ah oui, oui. Combien de gens habitez-vous dans le tour à Paris? Oui, oui. Hey, Abbott, I bet he runs out before I do. <laughs> Quiet, will you please? Now, look here. You might as well know it, old boy. I'll never permit Miss Barry to attend your dinner. Oh, yeah? There's Miss Barry now. Hello, Lynn, my darling. Oh, it's me, Mrs. Niles. Am I late? Yeah, but about 40 years. <laughs> what is this? Witch's night out? Costello, please. Boy, you sure get around. What do you got, a sea card for your broom? <laughs> oh, stop, Costello. Uh, Mr. Treacher, yeah. I'd like to have you meet uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ken Niles. Which one is Mrs. Niles? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Quiet. Treacher. Shh, shh, quiet. I don't go for that. Not too loud. After all, which one is Mrs. Niles? These people are friends of mine. Ooh. All of them are friends of mine. Which one is Mr. and Mrs. Niles? How do you like that, Abbott? Good. Good for you, Costello. You keep out of this, Kenneth. (laughs) Kenneth, are you... (laughs) Kenneth, are you going to stand for this? Costello is trying to make a man out of me and a woman out of you. Maybe we'd be happier that way. (laughs) Will you please stop those fights? I've heard enough, Costello. I could never allow Miss Barry to associate with an illiterate like you. Ah, gee, Treacher, don't keep Lynn Barry away from my house. You don't seem to really know me. I don't seem to really know you? <laughs> you corporate little corporal. 
Do you realize you've just split an infinitive? Why, does it show? Yes. <laughs> no, you dummy. He's correcting your grammar. You made a mistake. Who made a mistake? Now listen here, Mr. Treacher. When the adjective modifies the predicate adverb, then the pronoun of the subjunctive mood modifies the dangling participle, leaving the infinitive unsplit. Do you know what I mean, Treacher? Certainly. Then explain it to me. <laughs> Costello, you're not going to get Lynn Barry this way. You know that. Gee, Mr. Treacher, i got to have Lynn Barry here. I'm in love with her. She's my whole life. She means everything to me. i got to have her. I can't live without her. Does she really mean that much to you? Yeah, she's the only one that can string my yo-yo. <laughs> Very well, she means that much to you. Let me see how you'd make love to her. Now, just imagine that Mrs. Niles here is Lynn Barry. What an imagination you got, brother. Do what the man says. Take Mrs. Niles in your arms and kiss her. Oh, oh but Miss Rabbit, in my whole life, I, I've only been kissed by two parties. Yes, ma'am. The Democrats and the Republicans. <laughs> That's enough. I thank you, Mother. <laughs> Come here, my proud beauty. Oh, I'm not proud. You're no beauty either. <laughs> well, kiss fellow, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and kiss her. Not me, creature. If you know so much, you kiss her. I kiss her. Now, look here, that is, I mean, I really, I mean, I mean honestly, you can't really expect... Oh, what have you got to lose? There'll, there'll always be an England. <laughs> oh, come on, Mr. Over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quiet, quiet. Now, Mr. Creature, you show Costello the proper approach to kiss Lynn Barry. Take Mrs. Niles in your arm. All right, I'll do it. I have her in my arm. Now you put your What face... do I do now? You put your face next to hers. Yes. Now you're cheek to cheek. Yes. From where I'm standing, it looks like a dead heat at Bay Meadows. Quiet. <laughs> now, now what do I do? Now, Treachy, you kiss her. <laughs> and now what do I do? Give her back her teeth. <laughs> and Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight we salute Marine Private John Perella of Springfield, Massachusetts, whose patrol was cut off behind Japanese lines on Bougainville Island. Knowing that an American barrage was scheduled to hit this very spot, Private Perella volunteered to swim a strange tropical river, past enemy positions, and in spite of heavy enemy fire, continued till he reached American positions, just in time to prevent his companions being killed by our own guns. In your honor, Private John Perella, the makers of camels are sending to Marines in the Pacific 300,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> Each of the four camel shows honors a Yank of the Week. Send 300,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling camel caravans have thanked over three and a half million Yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore, Saturday to Bob Hawke and thanks to the Yanks, Monday to Blondie. And next Thursday, to Abbott and Costello with their guest, Miss Lynn Barry. Good night, folks. We're a little late. See you next week. Good night, folks. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show with our guest, Lynn Barry. And remember, camel cigarettes make the best Christmas gift of all. Whenever you buy them, wherever you send them, camels will be fresh because they're packed to go around the world. This is Ken Niles wishing you all a very pleasant good night from Hollywood. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.